I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And first order of business will be public participation. Dr. Joyner and Dr. White. Okay, I'm ready. Um, Dr. White, do you, how many people do you have waiting? Just one, one at the moment. Okay, uh, you have three minutes to speak. Uh, when the time is up, I will say time. And I'm hoping that you will end your speaking at the next complete sentence. And also, if there are people who do wish to speak this evening, please raise your hands now so that we can officially roll through each of our people. Thank you very much. Our first speaker tonight is Leslie Blateau. Ms. Blateau, you may begin. Thank you, Dr. White. Good evening. My name is Leslie Blateau. I'm a New Haven public school teacher and parent, and I'm president of the New Haven Federation of Teachers. Over the past two weeks, our educators throughout the city Educators who have chosen to work in New Haven are celebrating the strengths of our students and working to support their growth after what has been some of the most disruptive and chaotic two years of our lives. And if we are to one, retain these dedicated professionals and two, provide our students with the high quality education they deserve, we must collaborate as a community on the following areas. First, we must find the funding to deliver substantial raises to our educators in the coming years. An offer I couldn't refuse. I'll be making 20,000 more when I resign. I'm 40 years old and I still don't make over $60,000 are phrases I've heard on repeat these last few months. The teacher shortage crisis is impacting our entire state, yes, but other districts don't have vacancies for very long when they can offer our experienced and talented teachers significantly more competitive salaries. This board, this city, Yale University, and the state of Connecticut have a shared interest in the well being of our schools, and we must act creatively and ethically to ensure our schools have what we need. We also must commit to meeting the needs of our students. If we're serious about improving achievement as the ongoing pandemic continues to disrupt education, we must deliver more robust support and resources. Special education students need more. English language learners need more. And all of our learners need more opportunities for outdoor ed, art, music, phys ed, science, local history, and more. To put it simply, literacy and math instruction are not our only road to higher test scores. Our world is complicated and beautiful, and our students deserve a wide range of experiences to help them make sense of it. Lastly, if our shared goal is to support students, we must ensure that teachers' needs are met. Teachers must be respected as professionals, included in the decision-making process, and trusted. Without these elements in place, we will continue to see our teachers leave. With that said, I would like to recognize that our union and our district took a collaborative step forward in addressing the acute problem of vacancies while also compensating our teachers when we signed an MOU that will pay our departmentalized teachers 20% of their salary to teach a sixth class. This MOU recognizes the significant work that comes from teaching that sixth class and allows us to meet the immediate needs of our students, a shared goal of the union and this board. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Crystal Augustine. Ms. Augustine, you may begin. Hi, can everybody hear me this evening? Yeah, Throw glad to see you. Out. Yes, glad to see everyone. Thank you, board, for all that you do. Um, Madam President, I just wanna um, say um, thank you, Dr. Tracy, for all that you have done in our community and our school system. And I was saddened to see that, you know, you will be retiring. So my question for the board is, um, how is the search going to go? And when are we gonna start that type of search? Because I know in the past it can be uh, a lot and there should be focus groups and things like that. So how are we going to do the new search um, for the next superintendent? And when will that start? And that's pretty much it. Write down any questions about the mass. Yes, I do. 
Our next speaker is Matteo Festa. Matteo Festa, you may begin. Hello, my name is Matteo Festa. I'm one of the captains for the Wilbur Cross High School uh, soccer team. I'm a senior at Wilbur Cross. I appreciate this opportunity to speak this evening. I come with concerns of our athletic fields. The athletic fields have not been updated in a very long time. With that being said, the maintenance of our fields are not up to standards we expect of the city. The Rice Field Athletic Complex is dry and unsafe for our, for our players where someone will get seriously injured if not tended to soon. The football field and the track fields are in disrepair where varsity games cannot, cannot be held on them due to their poor conditions. What does this tell our, the athletes of our school? The perception is that the city and the Board of Education don't care. We know that the money has been set aside by Congresswoman DeLauro and the amount of and at the amount of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars from the federal government, the state has set aside two point six million. Where's where's the city's commitment? I I just the we we've the commitment of federal government uh, commitment from the state, but not from the city. We have SSR funds, which I don't know what I've been spent on. How about maybe ARPA funds that can be given for the fields? The money is there and we're asking you to do the right thing and providing us with fields that are safe and that we can be proud of. Many athletes look, look to high school sports as an avenue to get scholarships in order to achieve higher education. Isn't this what the board so, is supposed to fight for? Don't the students deserve the opportunity? We're asking you to commit financially to making this happen sooner rather than later. We have been very patient for a long time and now are looking for you to make this happen. Please let us know what you need to assist you in investing in this. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elias Theodore. You may begin. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here with similar concerns as Mateo. Uh, I'm one of the baseball captains and I also run uh, indoor track and cross country. And um, after playing on the fields, Rice Field, playing baseball in that field for the past three years, um, I can just say, it's unsafe. Um, it's kind of just embarrassing compared to the fields we play at. And it doesn't inspire kids to like take up extracurriculars and be a part of a team and a club. Um, and that's my main thing. I think sports are such a beautiful thing. Like they can lead to scholarships, but they're also like a path to making friends and staying out of trouble and having something to do each day after school. And the abysmal state of the fields and the dangerous state of the fields. I play in the outfield. Um, so whenever I go out there, I check if there's glass, I check if there's needles, um, which is just, it's ridiculous. But so if these facilities were better, more kids would come out and be inspired to participate, which, you know, helps our schools, helps the morale of the city. Um, and I just, yeah, I want this issue to be on the board of Ed's mind. Um, and it's great that the state, and um, the city have set money aside, but um, nothing's been done. There was a meeting last May with the engineers and they have this you know, grand plan, but we haven't seen any action. So um, I'm glad there are people here who care about this issue and I hope you guys are aware of it and um, put money aside and yeah, recognize, recognize the problem. Thank you guys. Our next speaker is Hyclus Williams. Ms. Williams, you may begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see everyone this afternoon. Um, thank you all for your ears. Um, I just wanted to follow up behind Leslie. Um, she made an eloquent speech and I want to agree with her. Um, everything that she says, it has been a long time since New Haven public school educators has been on, is being underpaid. And I think it's time. It's time that the board recognize that we're all being underpaid. All the educational staff are well underpaid. Other districts that has similar demographics and, and receive similar funds, they're able to pay their staff much better than we do. And it's about time that the board really dig into ensuring that educators in New Haven are compensated correctly. Um, I think that's just about it because Leslie had already said almost everything I was thinking to say as well. 
So thank you guys. Have a great evening and keep up the good work. Our next speaker is Kirsten. Please state your full name when you begin. Good afternoon. Oh, good evening. This is Kirsten Hopes McFadden, um, teacher at ESIMS, alumnus, graduate, graduate of Hillhouse High School, um, parent of former children in the New Haven Public School. They both graduated from ESIMS. So I'm very, very connected to this, this district. Oh. And my mom was a guidance counselor and teacher in this district, uh, teacher. So I'm very connected to this district. And I love children. I think that I should be able to talk to any child. You know, I, I see strange ch strangers that are children. I like to talk to them. And what has come to my attention, as, and, and I'm concerned on two levels. I'm concerned about the teacher who felt threatened. And I'm concerned about this child who's being treated as if he can do and say whatever he wants and nothing, no real serious consequence is going to happen. I'm not going to get into the details because I don't want to any way um, violate anybody's right to privacy. I will say this, though. The teacher was told not to engage with the student. That should not happen. I should be able to engage with every child that's in at ESOMS. If a child is not to be engaged with, then there's something wrong there. They are children and the adults, every adult, whether they teach that child or not, should be able to direct or redirect that child in the way they behave. And to be concerned about being cursed out or being threatened, that should never, ever happen. Like I said, I'm not going to give the details, but it was brutal of what happened. And I'm saying something has to happen here. And the response cannot be don't engage with that child. Because again, it's a child and we are the adults. We are the leaders. And what happens if we can't engage with certain children and other children see that, oh, we can't engage with that particular child what happens with the other children? Now we've lost, the inmates have control the village, the, 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 the place. They have the keys to the jail here. Like we are the ones that are going to set the rules. We are the ones that engage with the children. We are the ones that give the consequences. We are the ones that set the standards and expect high, I have high expectations of all my students. Every last living one of them. I don't care what your background is. When you come through those doors, I have high expectations of you. And I expect when I say something to you that is for your safety and for your educational well-being and your mental well-being that you're going to listen to me because I'm the adult in the room and I kind of know what's best for you. That's what I'm being paid for. That's what I was trained to do. And I've been doing this a long time. And for teachers who all the teachers who feel like this and are, are, are trying to make sure children don't get hurt, don't hurt each other, are where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, and to be cursed out, and then be, to be told by administration, well, don't engage with that child since you don't know that child. We are setting a bad precedent. We are setting a bad precedent for these children because guess what? When they hit the streets, and if they think they can use that same behavior with police officers, with other people, with strangers on the street, with people who have the right to carry, whatever, we are setting them up for a colossal failure. We have them here. They have to know that they have to respect us. We are not doing anything to hurt them. We're trying to help them. And we cannot be told not to engage. So I'm just saying that we, we it's, a, it's a very small part of the population that do that, but they can have a major impact on school culture and even more importantly, on themselves. Okay. I don't want this, I, my last sentence, I don't want us saying, because I'm going to call you all on this. I'm going to call everybody on this. That child slipped through the crack. I'm going to say, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I warned you. Thank you.
Next. Madam President, that concludes the hands raised at this time. Thank you, Dr. White. Mr. Bolton, did you have a question? Yeah, just a point of order, Madam President. I noticed that we don't have the minutes on the agenda tonight. No, um, <laughs> no minutes tonight. Okay. <laughs> they we were, just not... I guess they weren't able to get them oh, okay. um, for Thank tonight. You. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and so we move on to the action items, uh, personnel report, Dr. Tracy. Thank you, um, President Rivera. Good evening, everyone, board members and those who are listening. We have a very robust personnel report for this afternoon. First, I have a Peter Solomon from Sacred Heart University who is taking over from Mr. Tim Bizel, who was worked there for years as coordinator of the aquaculture program at Sound School. This is an internal candidate that they're promoting into that position. Um, this Peter is a native of New Haven and has been involved in marine science education as a teenager when he was a student. He completed his undergraduate in biology and environmental science at Brandeis University and later earned a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from the University of St. Joseph before studying education administration at Sacred Heart University. Peter founded the first scientific scuba diving program in Connecticut public schools. So that's, that's a great thing from, for Peter. And he also advises school sexuality and gender line student groups. Um, currently, Peter is developing a scientific diving program and restoring an oyster reef with his students in New Haven Harbor. So you will see in your packet Peter's resume, and you can you may have perused that already. We have 47, no, not two, not 47, 63 hires, um, teacher hires. 18 para hires on this blue sheet for action items. And I think that's a great thing to see us having teachers coming into New Haven. We still have the other revolving door where although we have 63 hires compared to what I reported last time, um, we have about 47 that are a mixture of resignations and retirements. But we are feeling we're closing the gap as quickly as possible. And I think right now we have about 70 to 80 open classroom vacancies. There are other vacancies. I'm just talking about classroom facing vacancies. And as we speak, HR is still hiring and putting in hires for people who are coming into New Haven. So that's where we are with that. I'm asking for the board to please accept the personal report if there are no questions. Mr. Bolton? I have a question, but I'll wait until after the item is um, moved and seconded. I can do. Is there a motion to approve, Mr. Wilcox? Uh, yes, I move that we uh, approve the action items of the superintendent's personnel report. I second. Thank you, Dr. Yarborough. Mr. Bolton? Uh, just a quick question, um, because I keep getting confused about this even after seven years. Um, what is a coordinator's position compared to a principal, assistant principal? Is, is, is that a substitute for a principal or assistant principal, or is it totally a different position? What's their responsibilities? Okay, it is, it's not a substitute for principal or AP. It just was a little le lower level than in terms of payment from the assistant principal. It was a path that was created to give administrators a trajectory to move towards, so you'll move from coordinator into assistant principal and then hopefully up into principalship. That was just a career path. So is this position the same as, as before the, we had a contractor who was responsible for like maintaining all the tanks and all that other stuff? Okay. Is this person responsible for doing that? No, okay. All right, thank you, Madam President. No, that that there was a person who was doing it. No, that was not Tom. There was another person doing the cleaning of the tanks right, and maintaining. But, but this person is going to be involved in those things without having an extra person doing that work we used to have. 
because remember Tim Weisel served in that position for whoo, since, since 1995. Since 1995, and he has since retired. And so sound school operates somewhat differently also. So they needed this position that was within their grants and proposal to be fulfilled. Okay. So, <laughs> I think that's it for the questions. That, that's it for that. Okay, seeing the discussion, we'll vote to approve the action items on the personnel report. Uh, Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Mr. Colton? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Ms. Roman? Is she on? No. Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Elliker? Yes. And I am a yes as well. And so that motion carries. Okay. If you want to bring uh, Mr. Solomon oh, in. Oh, bring Mr. Solomon in. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Hello. Um, thank you all so very much. I'm really excited to be here tonight. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tracy. Um, I've been at the Sound School for 14 years as a, as a science teacher and aquaculture educator there. Um, I'm really excited to step into this coordinator position and, and help this special school on the water. Uh, it's an honor to be a resident and continue to serve this school system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Thank you, congratulations. Solomon. All right, I'll, I'll just make a quick note that I see Dr. Tracy's resignation in the, I don't know what we're calling these, green sheets, yellow sheets, I don't know what this color green, is. Green sheets. <laughs> um, and so I just wanna say congratulations, Dr. Tracy, it's been, for you, I'm sure, an incredible run. What was it, 30, 38 years? 34, 38 years. And for me, it was an honor to serve with you on this board. Um, I feel like we almost became friends, although I'm sure that's inappropriate to say. But um, <laughs> I just want to say thank you for all of your hard work um, these past couple of years have been unbelievable and you've navigated it all with great strength and grace and I appreciate everything you've done for the district. Thank you. Mayor Alicker? Uh, I think there's gonna be lots of opportunities to say uh, things about Dr. Tracy's legacy uh, over the coming months, but I also just wanted to chime in as well and. Um, Dr. Trish, you often refer to yourself as the COVID superintendent, and you have seen this district through uh, the most difficult time that uh, at least I've experienced in my lifetime, and I uh, very much appreciate your service to New Haven. Thank you. Dr. Joyner? Uh, I don't, I don't uh, hide behind the fact that Dr. Tracy was a friend of mine before she became superintendent. Uh, and the reason that is the case is because she's a consummate educator. I don't think anybody could compete with her in terms of energy. She literally climbs mountains. <laughs> and um, one of the things that unner unnerved me over the last several years has been the instability, even before COVID, but certainly COVID robbed us of time. It robbed us of resources. It robbed us of relationships. And both she and, and Mayor Elliker and you, uh, Madam President, were stalwart in your willingness to push through. Uh, I, I was looking at Dr. Dr. Tracy's portfolio and, and, and all the stuff that was done in collaboration with the mayor's office to bring Chromebooks to kids, to bring food to families, to provide a refuge for homeless people. I mean, 
I think history will, will be very kind to us when they look at how New Haven has responded to a historic catastrophe, which is, is still out there. It's still out there, it hasn't gone anywhere. And your courage, Dr. Tracy, your, your ethics, your, you know, some people think stubbornness, the courage is stubbornness, but it can be a blend, but you wouldn't have been able to get out of the environment that you grew up in Jamaica and, and, and be successful if you didn't have a tremendous will, a tremendous concern for the well-being of other human beings, and a rock solid devotion to ethics. And you can't say that about it, all leaders. In fact, we're having, we're having a national major problem nationally now with people that don't seem to understand that they're servants and not kings and queens. And, and I really appreciate what you've done and I'm proud to call you my friend and my little sister. And I know that whatever your next move is, it's gonna be a good move because you like a lot of a lot of great women have really done a lot to help keep us above board and um, keep keep on keeping on and don't feel no ways tired. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Joyner. Dr. Benitez, then Dr. Yarborough. Um, just want to congratulate uh, Dr. Tracy. You know, I I served with her. And that was an interesting ride. We had um, several very interesting things happen while we were serving together in the same building at central office, but also as principals, we both serve and work uh, with, with our esteemed uh, superintendent, Dr. Mayo. And that I think was a unique experience for both of us, but I am so, so glad that mm -hmm. I was able to serve with Dr. Tracy at central office and get to know her better. And I'm glad that she was here to support the board, the students and the staff during the pandemic. And uh, again, congratulations you will not regret being retired. I am more busy now than I was in terms <laughs> of my personal life and my self-care. And I know you're gonna climb many mountains. I know that. So congratulations and thank you for your service. Dr. Tracy, I wanna thank you for your service and I know my words in this time um, won't do justice to the decades that you have put in. Uh, since joining this board in January, I have appreciated uh, your presence. And I recognize that um, during the pandemic, during the roughest times uh, of the pandemic and also for other reasons, when a ship is going down, it is easy for a leader to make a decision to jump off and, and save oneself and not continue. But it takes really a transformational leader to stay on a ship and try to get it to rise and to continue to move forward. And so I appreciate the timing of your transition. I appreciate your willingness to uh, ride the rough waves and also to keep uh, speaking hope uh, amidst the challenges to those you lead and those you influence. Uh, so as someone who is, is not at the place where I can retire, um, I appreciate looking ahead and knowing that I still have decades in me uh, because you have put decades in. So I thank you for your example. I thank you for uh, even those who have retired and came back to work uh, because you stayed the course. Thank you so very much. And uh, I look forward to the rest of this year and the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you, Dr. Yambrough. Let me, let me say this to everyone. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you for giving me the time and the opportunity to serve New Haven Public Schools. I enjoyed every moment of it. There are no regrets for me. I have come from the bottom all the way up to the top. And I think I owe it all to New Haven Public Schools. We have worked hard. We have accomplished a lot of things. 
we've had our challenges, but what would life be without challenges? Challenges make you better. And so we keep going. I had a great team. I, I would say one of the best teams ever that I've worked with in person of Tiffany Jackson, Ms. Keisha Hannon, Dr. Paul White, Ms. Viviana Connor, um, Dr. Um, Justin, who just joined us. We have um, my executive body, Lisa Mack, and names I may not have called, even Ms. Velasquez, all of these people, we work around the clock to get things done. When others were sleeping, we were up, strategizing and planning to make the school stay, the school system stay afloat during such a challenging time. And if I left out any names, I'd, my team would forgive me because, you know, the older you get, the more things you forget, so. <laughs> and um, so I, I need to add that for me, it's 48 years of service to education years. in my country and 38 here. So that's a long time. As I told everyone, I was teaching from age 16. I always wanted to be an educator. I tried to emulate my teachers in so many respects, kept my mind glued to what I wanted to do. It's all about children for me all the way. And I'm hoping that I have made an impact on the lives of those of whom I work and on my students in general. So thank you so much. Okay. Is Ms. Connor crying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Goldson. Thank you, um, Madam President. I wanna make sure I didn't miss anything as I stepped away for a moment. Um, I'm assuming that Dr. Tracy is gonna be here for a while, right? Um, and, and that we're gonna put a transition plan in place. Um, so I am going to save my accolades until um, until that time when um, she's actually turned around and walking out the door. Um, <laughs> Cause I don't believe it yet, uh, Dr. Tracy. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna celebrate it. Well, not celebrate it, but I'm not going to celebrate you yet until I know for sure you, you're walking away. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldson. Okay, uh, next item is the discussion and possible approval of the uh, Metropolitan High School field trips. Mr. Dr. Jordan. Okay, so uh, unfortunately because of timing, uh, they, they didn't get the uh, matter in time. So we had to rush in and make it happen because they couldn't get an answer until recently. So what I'd like to ask the board to do is approve the um, overnight field trip of Metropolitan. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, the field trip to Camp Cedarcrest on September 14, 2022. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Alicker. Mr. Goldson. Uh, are you need to I'm, I'm sorry, was, was that seconded? Yes. Okay, oh, Madam President. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Madam President. I, I just had a couple of quick questions about it because I was a little confused. It looks like it said it was going to be between 60 and 80 students. Just a point of order, Madam President. Yeah. I, I didn't hear a second, but maybe I was. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't hear a second either. Does someone want to second was it? Was there a second? Second. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, um, Mayor Elica. Um, I, I just had a couple of quick questions. I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I remember reading it a few days ago. And I thought that it said that there were going to be somewhere between 60 and 80 children attending. Did I get that number wrong? Is, 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 is Mrs. Coleman on so she could give you more details about it? Mrs. Coleman's not available to get, uh, oh, actually, she just finished with the doctor. But as I bring her up, uh, yes, it is for the senior class to go on this, uh, this is the first overnight in five years. Uh, this is with Project Pride. And how many and how many chaperones were attending this? Because that number didn't seem right to me, and maybe I I misread it. She's available to answer questions. She, she's on now. Mrs. Coleman. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I almost said Miss Hollis, but. That's, That's all right. <laughs> I still use it. Okay. Uh, what was the question, Mr. Ghost? 
So good the evening, first, everyone. The, the first question I had was how many how many children were or students were attending, and my second uh, question the, was how many chaperones were there going to be? At least uh, ten. It is a um, it, that was the number for planning. There are eighty seven seniors that it's available to. Uh, at the moment, it looks like it would only be about half the class. About 40? Yes. 40, 50? Yes. And, and you're going to have 10 chaperones? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. These are Thank also seniors. I saw different numbers in, in, the, in the document we had. So Yes, I, I put I, the maximum number. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further discussion, we'll go to approve the Metropolitan High School field trip to Cedar Crest on September 14th. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Ms. Roman? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Ellicker? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And so that motion passes. Thank you Fine. very much on the class, on the behalf of the class of 2024. You're welcome. Thank you. Finance and operations, Mr. Wilcox. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, before I make the motion, I have to note one correction on the action items that Ms. DeMeo with her eagle eyes found. And it is for, in the agreement section, the Roman numeral 26, which is also the bottom of the second page of our agenda. Uh, it's the amendment with the agreement with Catholic Charities to increase the funding of 1.4 million and change by 127,810 And if you notice, the math doesn't work because it says the same amount. So I have the corrected amount here. And so if you add 127,810.60 to that number, you're gonna get 1,591,346.60. So I'd like to note that math error there. And uh, so with that correction, I'm gonna make a motion and that is that we approve the six abstracts, 37 agreements, five contracts, and the five change orders. I second. You're muted, President Rivera. I said all that and you didn't hear me. <laughs> Any discussion? I was getting ready to vote. <laughs> okay, seeing none, we'll uh, vote on the FNL action items. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Ms. Roman? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Mayor Elliker? Yes. And I am a yes as well. And so that motion carries. And we'll move on to the student's report. Great. Um, is it all right if I share a slideshow to the board? Sure. All righty. Um, well, first of all, hey, it's been a while. I would say that I'm very well rested from my vacation, but school started up two weeks ago, so I feel like that'd be a lie. Um, but I do have a couple points of concerns, concern that I want to bring up with you today. Um, can y'all see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the student organization that I brought up a couple weeks ago, the Socialist Scholars Party, we already have our central committee picked out with our artists, our cultural workers, our surveyors, people like that. Um, so we're also trying to get Citywide Student Council up and running. I've been speaking with Mishai and central office staff to get that done. Um, but yeah, these first few months are gonna be a little confusing because we're just trying to find our bearings and really find our place within the students to gather information from them and organize them. But 
in these first two weeks of school, there have been some major problems that need to be addressed by the board. Um, first thing is the facilities uh, for the new school year and really it could testify to personal experience and cross. Um, during the rainstorm, which y'all know, I know we have a new facilities company. We're still awaiting the support and the work to be done in these schools because I'm gonna just show you a, a real quick video of the Wee Wing, which is where there's some classrooms and also where a lot of the students with disabilities go in Wilbur Cross. And this was it during the rainstorm. Uh, it was completely flooded. Students had to be redirected to the auditorium in order to continue classes. And obviously that interrupts um, instruction time and learning time. And this isn't a new issue either. Um, it happened a couple of times last year as well. And I'm gonna just replay it just so that it's really, really kind of on the record there. Um, so again, I spoke with Principal Tarka and about the facility situation at Wilbur Cross. And really we're just awaiting facility support and work to be done here um, because this shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, the facilities pe people at Cross are great, but we need to get these things repaired. Uh, secondly, is as y'all heard in the beginning of this meeting, access to adequate and quality athletics facilities. Um, very recently, students have come to me and told me about their grievances with especially Rice Field and just the lack of access to quality athletics facilities. And like one person, one student said in the beginning of, of the, excuse me, I'm sluggish today. At the beginning of the meeting today, these sports are incredibly important because yes, they provide an avenue for scholarships, but they also provide an avenue for comradeship, um, which is also a part of social emotional learning. Students need to be supported in all aspects, including the physical pathway, which is in the statement of philosophy on teaching, on teaching as well. So I will be meeting with these students, but I also ask that the board start to think about how we can get well, the Board of Ed and facilities, but also um, the city of New Haven moving on improving rice field and athletics facilities in New Haven public schools. Thirdly, is the New Haven Climate Movement's Climate Emergency Resolution for the Board of Education. Um, the New Haven Climate Movement, they're a community organization in New Haven composed of a bunch of young people and students. And we've been in communication for the last two months, last few weeks, um, about an initiative that they're pushing, which is called the Climate Emergency Resolution, uh, which calls on the Board of Education to declare basically a climate emergency and um, asks us to take steps on how we can mitigate the climate crisis as well. So again, these are all general things to let y'all know what um, this org and what I will be working on for the next few weeks, what we will be bringing up in student report meetings. Um, this isn't anything specific or concrete yet. This is just a tentative plan. Uh, but if any of y'all are interested, I will also send it perhaps after the meeting so that y'all could look through. I hope that it becomes an agenda item in the near future. Fourthly, the students election, student elections committee and representative power in regards to the city charter. Um, know that the city charter is coming up for review soon. And I'm also interested in looking into how, who sits on the student elections committee uh, so that we can ensure that it has a smooth process and it doesn't, well, what happened last year doesn't happen again uh, because we need more than one person running for the student representative seat. And last year it was incredibly inaccessible. So I also ask that y'all think about that and look into that as well. I'll be reaching out to some folks individually on this board and within central office staff to figure out what that's looking like. Um, and finally, well, I will also be, gather yeah, my words. I will also be looking for how we can improve access to rigorous mental health resources. I know we have plenty, but also working with staff to see how we can make it a more proactive approach so that they they reach out to students as well and students can get the support that they need. Um, but also looking deeper into the security task force report and seeing how we can better implement those steps. Um, so again, this is just a quick report that I've put together for what 
my mind is in, in the near future, what students are concerned about, uh, what I will be asking questions about, what I will be bringing in students to testify about. Um, and if any of y'all have any information related to any of these topics, please feel free to let me know because you know it's been a while since I've been here. Um, but for that, for all, that is my student report. Please let me know if there are any questions. You're muted, President Rivera. Mayor Elliker. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cruz Bustamante. Uh, thanks, Jay Poor. Appreciate you making the uh, presentation. Um, and spend the time to put that in a PowerPoint. Um, just because it's come up a couple of times already, I, I want to just give a, a very brief kind of update on the Wilbercross Athletic Complex. Um, uh, we're looking with the city engineer to have a, another community meeting in October. Uh, we're working with the Alder to identify the date and we'll certainly coordinate and uh, let you all know about it. Uh, we've also been working to identify funding. It, 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 uh, I think it's a, approximately three point something million dollars. It's been secured through a, a variety of sources as one of the um, people that testified said, but it will be more than this. That sounds like a lot of money, but um, there's multiple fields that need to be fixed. Um, but just wanted to, you know, to let people know that this, this is something that's very much on my mind. We've been working to identify additional funding um, to uh, make this happen. So stay tuned and I will let you know uh, or our staff will when this community meeting is. I think there's gonna be some questions that the community and we have to struggle with around, for example, uh, turf, what kind of turf we wanna use for the fields and, um, and other things like that. Hoping that people can uh, encourage other community members once we settle on that date to get uh, people more engaged. Thank you, Mayor Elliker. Mr. Bolton. Thank you, Madam President. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, the question doesn't have to be, I have two, two questions. And the first one doesn't have to be answered to this evening. Um, but I'm curious to know how we let that field or those fields get in such disrepair. Um, that's not just a one year um, issue. That looks like it's been neglect over several, maybe many years. And I'm curious to know how that happened and who was responsible for making sure that it didn't happen and who was responsible in the future for making sure I mean, it's, it's important to maintain the upkeep because if you let it go, then it just costs more money to try to bring it back. So um, I, I don't understand it. Um, I, I'd like to hear more about it in the future. Um, I know that years ago, we were getting complaints about the baseball field. I thought that was resolved. I guess it hasn't been, and I'm curious to know um, why. My second question is to Mr. Um, Cruz Bustamante. And, um, Curious, um, it said Socialist Scholars Party. I, I, I must have missed something. I don't know exactly what that is. So could you explain that, it's exactly what that is? Sure. Um, it's a relatively new student organization because one of the things that I included in my advocacy agenda is that I don't want myself or the ideas I proclaim to basically become a cult of personality, right? I want there to be a structure left in place so that other student leaders can really develop their leadership skills and also become student representative um, and for it not to just kind of die this year, or next year. Um, and you might be curious as to its name, but really it's an embodiment of justice, right? Of returning ownership and power and democracy back to the students, back to the workers, back to the teachers. Um, and it's really nothing more or less than that socialist because of what I just said, returning power to the people, scholars, because it's made up of students and party because it's a collection of people that are building on, building on top of their own ideas and building leadership development so that they can get involved within the board of education. So um, I, I appreciate that, that response and, and, and I understand it. Um, I don't know if I were advising you, if I would have, I mean, socialist makes it sound more political than it probably needs to sound. Um, it's more about student, student, um, student issues or scholar issues. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm 100% comfortable with that, but that's your organization. You can name it whatever you want to name it. 
Um, but I'm, I'll be curious to, to hear more about it in the future. Thank you. I appreciate your feedback, Mr. Goldson. And it's, it is done on purpose because socialism isn't a dirty word um, as it's treated in American politics. And the work that is being done is political. Um, there is a reason, it is for the political reason why we don't have enough pencils or we don't have enough teachers in our schools. Um, so, you know, that's kind of like the thinking behind that as well. Not trying to make it become another kind of administrative organization that's kind of moderate and very like calculated in that way. So it, it, it is kind of intentionally. I, I don't have to, I don't have a, word, a problem with the word socialist. I mean, I would have had, I would have the same question if it was said, if it said Democratic or Republican or, or Green or whatever else, um, only because it, it makes it sound more political, but that, that's your goal. I, I get it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldson. Dr. Joyner? Uh, the question I have is that, Dave, you represent all of the students in New Haven. And as a representative of all of the students, did you run this by them? And do all students have access to your party? Uh, it seems to be an ex post facto move. And how do you reconcile your status as an elected representative of all the students and then impose your own personal, it seems, label on who you represent? So one thing is that when I ran my campaign, I did not deceive anyone. I told everyone from the get-go, this is what I believe in. This is the work that I've done. This is who I am. So, and there was still 193 plus students who signed on to the petitions from more than two high schools. Um, now that isn't a, a bunch, right? That isn't a tremendous amount, but no one was deceived here. I'm not imposing my label onto anybody. The work that we're doing within this organization, I reviewed it last time I was in a meeting. It's completely open to everybody. Um, and it's also responsive to what students want and need. Now, the students that you talk to or, 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 or a representative group of students across the district? So that's what I was also going to get to. This, the problems that I brought up today were pretty limited to Wilbur Cross because school started two weeks ago. And like I said, it takes a couple of months. It'll probably take till October to really get a coalition of students from other schools as well. Um, but like I said, that was a platform that I ran on when I was campaigning before being elected to student representative. And that's the same platform that I'm keeping to now. Uh, so the problems that I brought up today that honestly, I hope we could focus on more today, such as the facilities management. Again, the athletics field was answered and everything else, but I digress. Um, is more localized to Wilbur Cross because it's simply easier for now for me to talk to students and see the immediate issues there as I build up a base with other students. So there is a plan to expand outreach and build a coalition of other students who have different opinions and different perspectives and different experiences as well. It's so not you're, in, you're in effect of representing the part, that particular party? No, the party is composed of students from different schools who are interested in joining, simply put. I'm a little confused. Well, I'll, I'll let it go. I'm a little confused about it, uh, but maybe you and I can talk offline. Sure, but again, um, I'd like to return to the main issues that I brought up in a student report and not so much the label that it's attached to. Well, that was my point, that we need to focus on the main issue and the fact that you represent the entire city of students. And, and I don't have a problem with socialism. In fact, this country doesn't have a problem with socialism as long as they're given corporate uh, support for, for, for corporation heads of industry. The problem that we have with socialism is, is when, when people apportion resources to poor people. So I don't, I don't have a problem with the word, but I just think that if you represent the entire city and the students, that it could be problematic and that you might want to consider that. But it's your call. Thank you, Dr. Joyner. Mr. Wilcox and then Ms. Roman. Uh, thank you. Just a couple of quick points here. Uh, first off, um, thank you for report, uh, uh, Mr. Bruce Bustamante. And as been mentioned previously, as you get the full student government me meetings up and running, um, just request that you let the rest of us know when those would be and uh, when you would want other board members there. Uh, 
I think in previous meetings we've all talked about, we'd be you know very happy. To, I'd personally be very happy to attend more. And uh, I imagine others have also said the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, the next item uh, I will, uh, just as a follow-up, uh, I'll be asking on the citywide buildings stewardship um, meeting that cross flooding issues be put on there as, as an agenda item. And not only as an agenda item, but as one of those things that we track in the, uh, the chief operating officer and, and his team put together a, a report on various maintenance projects, construction projects, and so on. I'll be asking for that. And also for the athletic fields, I think it would also be great if we could get some information on the school side about some of the planning that's apparently taken place regarding uh, some big investments into some of these fields, but then also just the various maintenance. Um, we do cover, like in the last meeting, we did have reports on the work that's happening on getting our swimming pools up and running. That's been a major focus uh, of, for athletic facilities uh, as well as the playgrounds. So um, I'll certainly be asking that, that we get more information on that so that we can start tracking what the issues are, um, particularly in terms of safety issues. Uh, those are obviously extremely important. So uh, that's just a follow-up on those things. And a final thing is a follow-up uh, as um, I've shared with um, the Finance and Operations Committee with the Student Climate Group uh, and others that we will be having uh, that uh, climate resolution on the Finance and Operations agenda at our next meeting uh, with the hope of bringing it to the full board uh, subsequent to that. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Dr. Jordan? Yes, uh, I'll be brief. Um, in terms of teaching and learning, we're in a transition period, both in terms of uh, a handoff from uh, Mrs. Evelise Velasquez, who will be going to New Britain, and uh, Mrs. Keisha Red Hannon, who will be assuming that responsibility. Mrs. Red Hannon and I have had several meetings, and what we're trying to do is develop a, a, an agenda for the year with an understanding that we will have to make some major, major changes in the infrastructure of our schools if we're going to fight back against the learning loss that we, in, we encountered with COVID. And again, COVID is still, still in, in the air and we're going to have to reimagine schools under, under environments like this. And uh, we had conversations about data collection and analysis and ways of presenting data to the board. We'll be able to send you a suggested template between this meeting and the next. We had some conversations about student behavior, uh, which is critically important, Differenti differentiated instruction, both for individual students and for schools that have students in the, in the lower two quartiles of, of smarter balance assessment. Targeting instruction and assessment and the idea that we're gonna to have to really work with our teachers to align instruction and assessment with the state standards. And that's gonna require a great deal of professional development. And we're gonna to have to uh, actually draft people within the district who are good at that. Uh, because right now we're, we're a department of one. And it's, it's a, it's a phenomenal. we have Wonder Woman doing the job, but she, she, she still had her sisters in the movie, so we're gonna to have to draft people to do that. I think what is really important for us to understand the impact that COVID has had on every institution in our, in our culture and in the world. And it's, it's impacted families, it's impacted schools, churches, financial institutions, and we cannot diminish that conversation because it is historic and uh, it is having a historic impact on us and we're going to have to make some changes in order to reach, particularly the kids in the bottom two quartiles. In my home state of North Carolina, a third of the schools in the entire state have failing grades. And it's a large state. And, and so that is a trend throughout the country. We can do it because we have the talent. We have the uh, energy to do it. And I only gave myself two minutes and I'll stop and give you a more ex exhaustive report at 
uh, our next meeting. Thank you. I'm done. And you're muted, Madam President. You're muted. Yes. Okay. How many meetings have we done? Uh, thank you, Dr. Joyner. Any questions for Dr. Joyner or comments? Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the student's report because I realized uh, Ms. Roman didn't give a report. Hi, everyone. Um, I just have a question and then I'm going to talk a little bit about my school. My question is, when it comes to lockers and stuff, is that a school thing or is that like a district thing? Like, does the school decide when we could start having lockers again or is that something that the district decides? That's a school of Mashai. That's, That's a school of Mashai. Oh, okay. A, that Thank happened you. at the school level. Thank you. Okay. And the next thing I want to talk about is I know that at Hill House, we got a little backlash lately, but I want to say that my school has been doing a great job making sure that students are being listened to and heard and making sure that everyone is just being taken care of. And I really want to give a big like appreciation to Mr. Sweeting because he's been doing a great job. And I know it's been really hard, but I feel like our school is on a good track. And I really appreciate y'all making him principal. So thank you. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Roman. Okay, any questions or comments from Ms. Roman? I'd like to, I'd like, I'd just like to say to her how I know your story and I know how hard you work to try to represent your classmates and peers and all the stuff you went through last winter. And I really appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to watching you uh, continue your, your journey and go to your school of choice uh, this year. And I'll do anything I can to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Berner. Okay, moving on to superintendent's report, Dr. Tracy. Okay, thank you again, um, President Rivera. So in terms of report, we have had a very good start for the school year that we are saying don't speak too quickly, <laughs> but it has been very smooth start to the school year. The transportation has been going on very smoothly. We're not getting a lot of parental complaints, a little here and there about students at different bus stops. But aside from that, Teddy Barra has done a great job in ensuring that the transportation went off without much of any issues. And let me tell you, Teddy Barra has been around to just about every school. I am so proud to work with her and to know that she's working part-time. You would think she's working full-time, the amount of time she puts into this work to make sure transportation is smooth. I also know that I've been around to my team. We fanned out to different schools and we've covered all schools within the past two weeks. I've been to 39 out of 41 so far, I have two more to, to visit just checking in, how are you doing? What are your needs? And then the next time we'll be going to classrooms to say hello to the kids and, and their teachers. But for the most part, I think that's something we can celebrate at this juncture that 2022-23 school year has gone off at least for now without much of any problems. Yes, we had the rain, and yes, we had the leakages in, in some of our buildings are old and even the new building. Yes, we've had power outages and we've had phone outages and all those things, but those things were quickly resolved. Um, we, we have a lot of work that needs to be done with our HVAC systems. Mr. Lam is ordering, as you know, Beecher School has a rented unit right now. They're more saying they're too cold rather than too hot, which is a good thing. Uh, we just have to find a balance in terms of the temperature. But we are going to be listening and, and listening to our students, listening to our staff as we move through this year. We want this year to be very much a focus on 
instruction, see what's happening in the classroom. Our focus will be on small group instruction throughout the system. We are providing professional development for staff. And also as we look forward to implementing the state's new reading program, we still have not, they've not released to us the five reading programs they're looking at. So we're still waiting on that. And then when that comes, we'll be able to pilot to some extent to see which of those we would be using in New Haven. So that's where we are. I, I'm, I'm really pleased because last year was rocky and the year before was rockier. So this school year, I guess maybe because I say I'm leaving, but it's it's smooth. And you see that it like this. Don't, don't, don't speak too quickly, but it, it's been going fairly well. Um, apart from, I spoke about the staff staffing needs that we have. We're still working hard and filling those. Majority of those that I have concerns about are in the K-8 schools with science and math and social studies. And people just tell you, I'm going, I get a, a chance to get, you know, more funds in another school. I can't really pass it up. And then you have to understand. You have to really understand and move on and try to seek for um, making sure that we fill those positions. Having said that, and I think Leslie spoke about that not too long ago, we had a memorandum of understanding with the teachers union about having these teachers in these crucial subject areas in the high school take on a sixth, sixth class, and then we'll pay them for that, which will be 20% of their current salary, wherever they are, to make sure that the students have a teacher who is certified to teach those subject areas. So that's an MOU that we forgot to put in the packet, but we sent it out. I think Ray sent it to the board. Very short MOU, and Leslie spoke of that. Um, so I'm not sure, does that require a motion to do this or that's just understood? Point of order, Madam President. Mr. Bolton. I assume that it, it needs it, uh, two motions, one to amend the agenda, and then a second one to to, to approve that item. Mm -hmm. I will um, I will move to amend the agenda to add the, um, the MOU um, presented by the superintendent. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, we'll vote to amend the agenda to include that item. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Ms. Roman? Is he no longer with us? No. Uh, Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Ellicott? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And so that motion passes. Thank you so much. Um, um, Madam President, I'll move. Be the, yes. Madam President, oh. I'll, move the, I'll move the item. Go ahead. Second. Wait, can there, uh, we need a motion. <laughs> I, I just moved the, moved the item that we just added to the agenda. So don't we need can, can, language for Ms. Ms. Mason? Um, you can put, <laughs> I don't, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know what the language is. Um, does someone else want to, someone who has it in front of them want to do that? Uh, we can, we can move to authorize the superintendent to carry out the, um, I'm looking for, I'm looking for it now. The MOU, the, the MOU. Execute the MOU. I think we can move to, uh, to, Allow the student center to execute the, the subcontracting. Is that? No, oh, this is something else. This is a subcontracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we have that in the packet, Dr. Tracy? I, 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 I kind of remember what it says. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox? As a hand raised. Okay. Wilcox and then Dr. Yarborough. Uh, yes, it's the memorandum of understanding for teachers accepting a sixth class for 2022 through 2023. 
I'm not sure. That's my motion, Madam President. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Bolton. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay, Dr. Yarborough, you have Yes, thank you. Um, just uh, maybe a, a clerical note uh, to correct the years that are covered in the memorandum. It says April 2022 and June 2022, uh, and I believe they should be 2023. 2023. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, so if oh, so, adjust Oh, yes, 2023, you're right. Yeah. That's the time. Okay, we'll correct that. That's a friendly amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even okay. like Yarborough. Put that up. I try. <laughs> All right. Any discussion on that? Madam President. Mr. Goldson. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I don't like voting on on on, on issues that um, that have a price tag that we don't know. I, I would have liked to have seen a fiscal statement attached to this telling us how much it's going to cost. Um, if the answer, if we don't, I'm, I'm going to vote on it anyhow because I think it's important. Um, but I, I really, really don't like doing that. So I hope um, that we'll get something um, fairly soon and in the future uh, when we have these sort of um, items um, that there will be a um, fiscal note attached to it. Um, I also like to. Um, also hope since it wasn't publicly um, posted that we get it out um, on the website and to mm -hmm. the press as soon as possible. So everybody's, you know, so we're transparent about what we're doing. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Wilson, that's a good point. Um, okay, seeing no further discussion. Oh, Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, I uh, wanna express appreciation for our school leadership and our union leadership to collaborate and work together, uh, and the teachers who are agreeing to teach a sixth class, um, which is different from their contract and to be compensated for it. Just appreciate the work, uh, the creativity, and the effort put forward to make sure all of our students have teachers in front of them who are certified. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yarborough. Dr. Tracy? You're muted, Dr. Tracy. You're muted, Can't Dr. Tracy. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Dr. Tracy. Can you hear me? No. no. We would not have had the total um, fiscal part of this because we don't know how many teachers are going to take up this opportunity that's going to be offered. So whenever we get the number of teachers who are willing to do this, we'll have that fiscal aspect to share with you. This is just to get this moving. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tracy. Mayor Alicker and then Mr. Bolton. Yeah, I appreciate the point about wanting to get some clarity on the, the financials here, but this is meant to help address the teacher shortage. I presume that a lot of the costs will be offset by the saving in the number of teachers that we're not paying because we have a shortage right now. Is that, that uh, generally the case, Dr. Tracy? You're correct. You're thank correct. you. This is for vacancy, yes. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. I, I appreciate all that, um, but I just think we ought to get into the habit mm -hmm. of um, of when, when we're when we're adding um, positions and and fund and funds to the um, uh, um, costs to the um, to our budget. We should have we may not be able to get a a exact figure, but a roundabout you know figure a range or something that gives us an idea. Um, and um, thank you, um, Mayor Elliker. Um, I didn't think about the offset from the teachers not being hired. Um, that's very important. But um, just, I just think, you know, as a board with a four hundred million dollar budget, we ought to be, um, you know, be keeping a careful eye on uh, on the funds and, and when we're making these decisions. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. All right. Seeing so no further discussion, we will. Uh, vote on that item, Mr. Wilcox. Yes. Uh, Dr. Joyner. Yes. Dr. Yarborough. Yes. Mr. Cruz Bustamante. Yes. Mr. Bolton. Yes. Dr. Benitez. Yes. Mayor Elliker. Yes. I'm a yes as well. And so that motion also passes. Dr. Tracy? 
for that. Yeah. Um, move on to the next one. I know Mr. Gorson is going to have the same question about this. Um, this is a subcontracting you know, for accountant for Laura ben, ben, ben and Bento. As you know, Laura had retired. Also, the position which Ms. Hannans had has not been filled either because it is so difficult finding fiscal officers. We have advertised, we've not seen much of any take. So if you know of anyone out there who has qualifications and can do this work, please let us know. We've been trying. We're just not getting people to take on these positions. We have Pat's position also that we've been trying. <laughs> so we don't want to um, leave Miss Linda with not much support in her in her area. So Laura was one of those individuals who helped a lot with the special funds, which are in the millions, and um, the fiscal department is asking to subcontract for accountant four at the cost of $44.68 per hour for 19.5 hours per week to help do this work until we get someone in that position. This was an MOU done also between their union and the Board of Education. And this is also not on the agenda, right? So that we have to amend the agenda to add this. Yep. Dr. Joyner? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to amend the agenda to add uh, this item to the agenda, the memorandum of understanding between uh, Laura Benevento, Local 3144, and the New Haven Public Schools. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to the Madam President, mm -hmm. just, just rather quickly, um, Dr. Tracy is a very wise woman. Um, I, do have, I did have the same question or point uh, about this position. So, um, I hope we get that information in the future. Obviously, um, it's the um, like, um, Mr. like the mayor said earlier, it's an offset uh, position is not filled, so uh, it should be fairly even. But we st we still should um, have that in writing and and approve that um, as is. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Okay, so you no further discussion. We'll go on amending the agenda for that item. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Ellicker? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And so that motion passes. Now the motion to approve the MOU. Dr. Joyner? Madam Chair, I motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between New Haven Board of Education, Local 3144, Council 4. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, you paused. Okay. I thought you were over. No, that's good enough. Uh, I was going to just add subcontracting for accountant for Laura Benevento to make it more specific. Second. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Yes, and then Mayor Ellicott. Um, I believe that this is an example of the uh, imagination and resourcefulness of our superintendent. I think if you look at the national scene, COVID not only robbed us of time, but it also robbed us of human resources. And in some states, they're hiring veterans to be teachers. I don't know how that's going to work if they haven't been teachers. And we've had to do this in a lot of, lot of areas. So I commend you, Dr. Tracy, and I would urge all the board members to support this and future moves like this if we have to make them. Thank you, Dr. Joyner. Mayor Ellicker? I'm sorry, Can you could you give uh, Dr. Tracy a little bit more detail on the scope of what we're voting on? Dr. Tracy? And Ms. Laura Benedict, Ms. Hannans is on here. Let me let Ms. Hannans, Hannans, Ms. Linda Hannans. Hmm. Yes, um, Laura is basically the um, accountant in the department. She handles all of the budget entries onto the system. Um, and when we set up the accounts, um, she's the one that does all of, all of the entering to the Munis financial system. 
Um, she, she's also responsible for all the, the um, income that comes into the district. She does all of the recording. She does all the, of the adjustments, like when you see the blue sheets moving one from teachers from one place to the other. She has to you know, get all of those calculations and do all of that work as well. Um, for years, she's the one that's followed Munis, so she's the most up on the um, Munis financial system. As Munis has grown, she has grown with it. And so she's really the right arm to the finance department at this point. We have posted jobs and we just are not, because um, we have a, had a few jobs in finance, we just are not getting candidates. The candidates that are applying um, um, for the most part, they, they, don't, they don't carry the minimum, minimum qualifications or by time we reach out to them, they've applied for other jobs in, in, um, in other finance areas. I'm finding a lot of people don't want to come into the office, which is a major um, downfall. And um, what the salaries that we're offering for finance, like CPAs and stuff like that, people, I thought I had a person that I could come in and interview. And when I told her what the salary would be, she, she hesitated so long, I thought she hung up on me. So <laughs> I, I don't doubt the intentions. I just want to make sure it's because in the past when we've done uh, 3144, typically we negotiate on the on the city side, the contract. And I just want to make sure there, there's been communication with our labor director to make sure there's no issues with the direct agreement with 3144. No, because the, these were grant grant funded positions. So, no. Lisa, um, do you have I any did, issue I did have with a I did have a conversation with um, 3144 before I even started to look this way. And, you know, I explained what the, what the issue was and, and, the, and they were agreeable with it. So they've been very supportive in, you know, in issues like this. And I saw Ms. Lisa was gonna chime in there just to- Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. So, good, good evening board. I just wanted to add in Mayor Elker, um, what Ms. Linda said is actually correct. But I have also reached out to Ms. Um, Wendella. I'm not sure I can't remember her last name. And so I, she, we're under the understanding that we work closely together, but all the BOE matters she wants handled on the BOE side. So we work closely with Guild of the Local 3144 um, president to develop this MOU um, because it's a BOE employee and it is grant funded. And I, I don't know if anyone mentioned this, if you all know this already. Um, Lynn, um, Laura Benevento, she's retiring. She's already retired. So that is the primary reason why we certainly need to have this role filled temporarily until we're able to secure up someone for this position full time. And to speak to Ms. Linda's comments that the, the, I know they're, they're in contract negotiation. They have been for some time now. Um, what a major um, roadblock is the salary is simply because there's that clause in the contract that says you can't hire anyone making more than the lowest paid person in that position. And that, at that point, turns a lot of candidates away. We've had a number of applicants, but when the salary was listed and offered, um, you don't seem to get any ones that are interested in an interview and pass finding out the salary rate because it's step one and it's not competitive, it's competitive to other school districts or other companies. So okay. that will be a challenge for us. Thank you, as long as you've been in communication with the labor director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And seeing no further discussion, we'll vote to approve uh, the MOU with Local 3144. Mr. Wilcox. Yes. Mr. Bolton. Yes. Dr. Joyner. You're muted, Dr. Joyner. Dr. Joyner. Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Elliker? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And so that motion passes. Okay. Dr. Tracy, does that conclude your report? I miss my report. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thanks okay. No problem. And I have no report um, at this time. Mr. Goldson. You're muted. You're muted. I, I'm sorry, Madam President. In, in regards mm -hmm. to the superintendent's report, 
Um, I just wanted to know if there is a timetable that we will receive a plan or um, some, some something related to the report we got several weeks ago around reading and writing and learning loss in the district um, and how to make that up. I know that we're doing little pieces like, like for instance, the MOU we did um, with the teachers taking extra classes will be helpful as part of the of that plan, I would imagine, um, of providing um, certified teachers to our students. Um, but is there an overall plan um, on how we're going to address that issue? Because we've been in several meetings and I haven't seen it on the agenda and I'm wondering when it's going to appear again. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Ms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank, you, uh, thank you, uh, Board Member Golson, for the question. Uh, at this time, um, I'll, I'll share with you what we've done thus far. Um, uh, we convened a team of teachers and administrators designated by the union leadership uh, to meet with the curriculum supervisors for literacy and math. Uh, this team is planning community meetings. Uh, that will be held in various uh, neighborhoods throughout the community um, to review a draft plan for our reading and math plans, and also an opportunity to react to it, provide feedback and input. Uh, thus far, we have presented uh, at cabinet, um, we presented to the community planning team, uh, we will also be presenting to the administrators uh, uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow it is Staff Development Day. As you are aware, we will also take some time. Uh, uh, the math supervisor and the literacy supervisor, they won't be able to present to all teachers tomorrow, but they'll be presenting to them. We'll be presenting at Teaching and Learning uh, next week. And then we will come before the board after we present to teaching and learning an opportunity for you to provide feedback as we continue with our community meetings. And then finally, we will show you the final plan. We thought it was very important to get this plan into the community, to hear from all of our stakeholders, because everyone has value and input in ensuring that our kids are literate and also uh, know how to compute as well. Thank you. Um, um, thank you for th for that um, update. I, I hope that I can get it in writing because I, I absorb stuff a little easier when I when I can read it and kind of touch it and, and, and understand it. Um, I, I got to say my initial response is I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we're just starting to plan the plan. Um, I hope I hope that we would have been further ahead in this process. Um, but um, I'm glad that we are um, that, that we that there is a plan being developed or a plan on how to plan um, being developed, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Madam President. If I can respond, I just would say, Mr. Goldson, I think you can recall I I just was appointed uh, to this position not even a month not even a month in, <laughs> um, and when I and and just to be totally transparent, um, I didn't come into this position wanting to have a fight with the community. Just like you, I've observed every board meeting. I've listened to our teachers, I've listened to our stakeholders, and it was important to engage them in the process of developing the plan. And we've had some really robust conversations that are continuing. Um, so I think even though, you know, we may have wanted to roll something out in September, um, I did put the pause on that because I didn't feel like we had enough input into the plan and I did not want it to be top down. Dr. Joyner? Yeah, I just wanna add to that. It takes, takes a long time to, to, a longer time than most people will, will understand to try to move an entire system, to move kids that that show up at school chronically undereducated. And actually, Ms. Hannes has done a phenomenal job meeting with, with, with her peers 
Uh, Viviana and Gemma have done some work. Actually, they did some work last year in trying to prep for this. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna meet in some schools on Wednesday to continue this work. And and Darnell, it's gonna it's gonna require a lot of response from the community because a lot of our problems are, are problems that we don't have any direct control over. Like I said, you can't you cannot teach an empty seat, but you also cannot teach an angry seat. And some of the public comment tonight indicated that um, we have some real serious problems in the school regarding student behavior. A small group of students, but only, it only takes one or two students to disrupt something. In fact, you can go on a crowded movie and one person can ruin the whole night for everybody there. It's the same thing in church and any, any mass grouping. So it's going to take some time. It's going to take some re-education re and it's going to take the support of our students and our parents to try to help them position themselves to be able to learn. We have, we have a lot of resources in place, but moving a system this large is not something that happens overnight. And it, it, it requires a great deal of response from the community as well. So we're gonna, we, we're gonna have some really, I think we're gonna have a state-of-the-art uh, standards-based approach to trying to move these kids up. And we're also gonna have a data reporting system that will be user-friendly for the board. But again, it takes time. And we, we were working in a storm and the storm is still there, but we're, we're gonna have something. And it's better to have something that's good than to rush into something. And we also have to work with the state. The state has some mandates themselves. Dr. Tracy can talk about that. And, and we have to work within the state constraints as well as what we all know here locally about how to best educate our kids. And I'm very optimistic, more optimistic than I've been in a long time about what we can do because we have a strong support system in the mayor's office and, and youth services and all those other organizations. And we don't have the turmoil and instability that has characterized previous years. So I, I, see, I see some hope ahead and some action too. Thank you, Dr. Joyner. Um, I just need a clarification. So we do have a plan, but what we are doing right now is we are bringing that plan to different constituencies, constitu constituency groups so that they can give you feedback and perhaps there'll be some uh, adjustment to that plan. I would love to see that plan myself being in the, on the board of education and have not seen it unless I've seen it and I don't know I have. Please clarify for me. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Benitez. Uh, we're bringing it to teaching and learning next week. And then after the teaching and learning committee meeting, it will come before the board of ed for input as well. So Dr. Joyner and I have discussed presenting it during the TNL meeting next week. So uh, wait, you know, I am co-chair of that committee. I have not seen it. So I would love to see it like this week so I can read it and I can be prepared for the meeting. I would really appreciate that, please. Okay, next. Dr. Tracy. So um, of course we can share Dr. Benito the draft plan with you. It's still in draft form, but let me let me make something clear. New Haven Public School has always had literacy and math plans. What we're doing, we're saying, what are we doing differently? Or what are we adding to what we already have to respond to some of the data that we're seeing? That's what we're doing. But anyway, I don't want anyone to think that we've never had literacy and math plans. Dr. Benitez was here. She knows that we have literacy plans and we have math plans. What we're looking at, what are we doing differently to create a sense of urgency about what it is we're doing. And now before we did not get community input, we used to have just you know coaches and others input, but now we want to get community input as and teacher input as suggested by Mr. Golson the last time. So that's what we're trying to carry out. So it's gonna take some time to get a robust plan in place. It will maintain some of the aspects of what we would do and some things we're doing differently. Does that make sense? 
Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Mr. Bolton. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to kind of piggyback on Dr. Benitez's comments. Um, she is she certainly is the um, vice chair of that committee or co-chair. I'm not quite sure how it's titled. Um, so she certainly should um, should have gotten that plan. But we're all members of that committee, so we all that is that is a committee of the whole, um, and we all should have, um, especially if it's going to be presented at the at the meeting, and there's going to be an ex expectation to get input. Uh, we should have a copy of that plan. Um, so I, I hope that um, with due haste, uh, we get it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Okay, Dr. Tracy, does, I mean, yeah, does that conclude this yeah. conversation? Back to your report? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. And, and I did say I didn't have a report at this moment. Um, so we'll move on to Head Start Report, Mr. Wilcox. Uh, yeah, and before I do that, I'm just going to say it's going to be great to see everybody in the next Teaching and Learning Committee, since it sounds like there's some great interest here. So um, just as far as the Head Start <laughs> Report, um, there is uh, no report because this uh, committee is going to meet this Thursday, although I can anticipate that we will still have room in our Head Start classrooms for students and so please put the word out and however you can that uh, there are still slots available for Head Start in New Haven. Thank you. And so you want school building committee for, oh, hold on, Dr. Yarborough. Yes, just a thought came up, uh, Mr. Wilcox and, and team. Um, thinking about the uh, advertisement investment that the board approved some while ago, um, if there's a way, maybe the company does this automatically, but to see if there's any return on the investment through enrollment, uh, that might be of, of interest and help us to know, you know, maybe through what direction we can continue to adver advertise and help families to know that Head Start programs are available. Um, uh, yeah, to maybe see a difference in enrollment between last year and this year, and then if people responded to billboards or uh, certain uh, postings, uh, that would be interesting. So thank you. Uh, uh, th thank you for that. I will certainly bring that up with them. And um, I believe advertisement is a requirement of the grant. So some of it's gonna have to happen anyways, but we certainly need to know what's the most effective ways. I do not know if they've been collecting that data as they go along, but it might be something anecdotally that they could collect after the fact or, um, it's also something the way, it, as you recall, the way it's structured with the policy council, which is the parent group, which at the last meeting uh, I was at, they were uh, reconstituting that for this new year with some new parents. That also might be something that's that they could bring up with them uh, in preparation for the next round of advertising is, you know, what works, what do people see? Um, in addition to the advertising, though, they've also done a lot of what one change uh, this year, and I believe the summer previous was having um, extra people hired on an hourly basis to help do sign ups, do pop up tents at different uh, locations. So I think in the end, that's probably was more. It's just my guess. You know, I'm obviously not an expert in advertisement, but that kind of hands on people there ready to help fill out the paperwork. Um, and being available at cultural events and things um, during the summer uh, is, is probably what in the end is the most effective. But I, I hear great. your point and I will bring that up with them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yonder. Citywide School Building Committee report, Mr. Uh, oh. Just briefly on that, uh, we did meet last Thursday, went through a lot of different progress on things in the district. I did notice that the report that was presented in that meeting has not yet been posted on the website. So I will be asking first thing in the morning that they, um, uh, that Mr. Lamb or his team put that up and available so that uh, anybody can peruse where things are. I've already mentioned about what I'll be adding as a re agenda request for the next committee meeting. So we start tracking athletic field information um, as well as, uh, you know, across the board flooding or these long-term issues that create ish, create problems when we have, it's certainly not, we're not gonna have with climate change, we're certainly not gonna have less big giant storms with a lot of flooding. So uh, in addition to everything we need to be doing 
is addressing what some of these flooding issues are. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Dr. Tracy, I noticed you had your, your hand up earlier. I'm gonna respond to the Head Start um, piece because the enrollment is pretty low. And mm -hmm. I am thinking that parents may be still having a problem sending out their little ones to the Head Start program because we're also seeing that in the in the magnet schools, the low enrollment at the lower level. So that could be an issue. But I know Ms. Mary Derwin and Pam, they're working very hard in that aspect to advertise and to get more people in because we have to bring that number, those numbers up. Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Finance and operations. I uh, already talked a bit about finance and operations, just some upcoming things on the agenda beyond what I've previously mentioned is we are gonna be taking a look at our next meeting in addition to the uh, climate, the student um, climate groups uh, resolution, also gonna be starting a project that we've talked about over the last couple months, which is the um, identifying the gap. So um, using librarians as an example or um, social workers, uh, where are these folks in the district? How many do we have? And then ideally, how many would we have if we had fuller funding so that we can um, identify what the gap is, you know, what our students and our schools and staff deserve. And so we're gonna be starting to take a look at that and have the discussion about what data is available from the district and what data we think helps tell the story of the need. So that's uh, something that's gonna be uh, we're going to start that conversation the next meeting, but in preparation for um, the legislative session, trying to get uh, our uh, elected representatives at the state level to uh, across the state to full um, to fully fund the ECS formula and to put it in the unrestricted fund so that we have the funds to do the things that we've been hearing about tonight, such as increasing salaries for teachers and other frontline staff and addressing the uh, great gap in our maintenance of uh, our, our buildings. So that's uh, something that's uh, gonna get started and I'll be reporting back to this group. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Okay, so no questions. Uh, governance report, Dr. Benitez. Yes, uh, at this moment, we don't have anything to present to the board for action. However, we did meet with uh, Ms. Velasquez and discussed um, or reviewed the advanced placement programming with a focus on being culturally responsive that it relates to access and opportunities for students of color into our AP classes. This is uh, something that I know uh, superintendent will appreciate this year and, and all of the uh, administrative team. Um, I know that Dr. Joyner and Ms. Velasquez have been uh, talking about uh, how that uh, how our policy might be uh, supportive of more access and creating a clearer understanding of all of the New Haven Public Schools community around that. Uh, we hope to be able to present a first reading of this policy next uh, in our next month first uh, board meeting. Um, and uh, the other thing that we will do for, for the board, we will also have you um, look at the action plan for the transgender non-conforming youth. As we all know, that is something that was approved, but we want to continue to um, help our staff understand that policy. And uh, we want also the board to continue to understand where we are with that. So Ms. Tiffany Jackson will present on that at um, our next meeting, which will be next Monday. So uh, we hope that she'll be able to answer any questions around that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Benitez. Okay, see no discussion. Uh, we can move on to the Food Service Task Group report, Dr. Yarbrough. Yes, thank you. Um, there is no report as the committee will meet on this Wednesday. Uh, and among the other topics, I look forward to hearing about the collaborative efforts for the food gap between summer break and the beginning of the school year. Uh, so there's been collaboration across the city and also uh, with state partners to make sure our students have food. Um, and I look forward to hearing an update and also learning about uh, what will be done in, in the future as we adjust to what we're learning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and seeing no further discussion, I uh, move to go into executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 12006A regarding discussion concerning the evaluation of public officer or employee, Dr. Edwin Tracy, superintendent. Um, and we would just be going in with all the board members and Dr. Tracy, if we need to call you in. Um, we'll let you know. And Ms. Hannon sent over the link for the executive session. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, um, we'll vote to go into executive session. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Dr. Joyner? Yes. Dr. Yarborough? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Dr. Benitez? Yes. Mr. Cruz Bustamante? Yes. Mayor Alaker? Yes. And I'm the yes as well. And so I'll see you in executive session.
Let's see everyone because of the screen clearing. Oh, there we go. Everyone back. Matt, I don't see me. Dr. Joyner. Dr. Joyner's here. Oh, right so at the at bottom of my screen. I don't know where he would be on yours. There he is. Actually, I've been running around and joining everybody else's screen screens. <laughs> I'm behind Orlando now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so we are out of executive session, back in regular session. No decisions were made in executive session. Um, we had more really good discussion um, on Dr. Tracy's evaluation. Um, however, we have not completed it. Um, we expect to adopt it though at the next full board meeting before the end of the month. Move to adjourn, Madam Chair. Second. Okay. Third. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Wilcox. Yes. Mr. Wilson is not here. Dr. Joyner. Yes. Dr. Benitez. Yes. Dr. Yarborough. Yes. Uh, Mayor Elliker. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Okay, so the motion passes. Good night, everyone.